When you stand up for what you believe in, what's important to you, speak your truth and authentically align with what is real and true to you, blazing brightly in the world, some people are not going to get you. They're not going to like it and try to bring you down. And today's episode is all about how to handle the heat and ensure that you stay true to your heart. Stay tuned. Welcome to The Bliss Movement, a podcast for big-hearted, driven women daring to be great who know that this starts by pouring love into themselves first. I'm Dr. Fee. I'm passionate about helping women to stop tuning out and burning out, but to tune within, reconnect with your heart, feel lit up, follow your bliss, and live life on your terms. So, get ready to expand your life beyond what you thought was possible when it comes to healing, well, love, purpose, and leadership. One of the things I've had to grow to love as a transformation coach is always finding yourself in the classroom. <laughs> Life just gives you the opportunities to embody what you teach, walk your talk, and you got to learn to love it, even though at times you want to resist it. <laughs> But that is the joy of being a transformation coach and often what we receive and how we grow and evolve then actually supports our clients. And I'm so happy to be here because I get to share with you my example and how I've been in the classroom and the three things that are really landed to support us in blazing brightly, meaning like standing up for what you believe in, speaking your truth, now, authentically aligning to what is real and true to you. This is how we make our precious life our precious life, not someone else's, but ours. <laughs> and that it is inevitable. Some people ain't going to like it. There's going to be, at times you're going to feel the heat and how to stay true to your heart when this happens, how to lead yourself through it, you know, really live brave and like lean into the experience because on the other side is actually everything you're seeking. So let's dive into it. So recently I have had the immense joy and grace of launching a free masterclass called Radiant Self. And this is the keys to transforming your people pleasing so that you are authentically aligned with what is real and true to you. And it's just been incredible. And in it, I shared my five-step evolve method. Okay. So a ton of value. This is training that my clients attended and it was accessible to anyone. And I poured so much into it that I had to change it from one class to two, <laughs> two classes because I didn't want to rush it. I wanted to ensure everyone got as much out of it as they can. And when I promoted it in my free group, Dr. V's Wonder Women group, one of the first comments, it was like, yeah, this is exciting. I'm in, I'm in, of course I'm in. And one of the first comments was like, is this for your 12K offer? And I was like, here we go, buckle up. I know where we're heading now. I'm in the classroom. And so I replied to this going, no, it's like, it's the free class and there's going to be a ton of value in it because it's what I've promoted. It's like an evolved method. You're going to get a lot of it out of it, come along. And of course, I'm going to sell the heavens out of my offers. And I have something for everyone. I have transformed the way that I support people so that no matter where you're at, you can plug in and receive the goodness. And so that's why I love my podcast and YouTube channel. It's why I love that I've got a $22 offer, a $108 offer, a 555. And working one on one with me is a $1,111 offer per month. And that's because honestly, the work we do, it's not for everyone. And I got to convey that. And it was just like, this is just how it is. And then I waited. And of course, within that day, I had a number of people who really felt that it was necessary to let me know what their perceived value was around that. And also just to, you know, what their opinion was like, you know, a 12K offer. And there was a lot of responses like, that's disgusting. How unethical, um, preying on the, preying on the, um, on the vulnerable. And I was able to just see it for what it was. And it, you know, this, that energy can be quite, um, 
provocative. It can be quite <laughs> activating and triggering. And again, just knowing I'm always in the classroom and this is a classroom. This is a free class about people pleasing. <laughs> so I'm like, universal love, you really got a sense of humor here. And just what I'm celebrating is that initially what really supported me, and I want you to take this away, is that this is to be expected. Whenever we stand up for ourselves or speak our truth or just do what feels right for us, it doesn't mean that other people are going to like it. You will inevitably be faced with people who want to reject you, criticize you, judge you, cut your head off. Hello, tall poppy syndrome. And, you know, honestly, it's sad, but it's just reality. It hurt knowing, and I had multiple women reach out to me in the DMs and they're like, I fear I had to leave the group. I couldn't, like that energy is just like, come on, if it's not your thing, if it's not your gig, like, <laughs> you know, why make a deal out of it? And I just was like, that made me feel sad. Like, to be completely honest, I want every offer of mine, every space of mine, I want it to feel safe for women to shine. Like the Bliss Sisterhood and Expanding Bliss, like these are sacred containers and spaces. Like I'm the person and I love being the person that other women can come to with their big crazy ideas and I stretch them even further. I'm like, no, let's tap into more possibility, more freedom, more wealth. Like let's go next, next level with this. And so it did feel a little, oh, that this space had that energy of projection and anger and frustration. And it's not that it's wrong that people have a different opinion at all. Tomato, tomato. It's like, (laughs) you know, how long have we been having that debate for? And so it's not about having a different opinion. It's just the way that we go about communicating it. And for me, what really helped, like I said, is just understanding it's to be expected. And that supports us to accept it. The moment we start to resist that that should happen, like, oh, wait up, I'm standing up for what I believe in and speaking my truth. It doesn't mean that people are going to love it. And the moment that we just try and resist it, we actually give our power to the situation. We become way more depleted and exhausted. And we actually are then setting ourselves up to fail or setting ourselves up to, to give up because we're resisting it. And it is so freaking empowering to just be like, yeah, I can see that. That's to be expected because people value different things. And for me, I value personal development. I value investing in myself first. Like I see that my health, my well-being, my cup being full as the greatest asset investment, what is required for me to show up as the mum that I want to be. It's the best for my kids. Like, have you ever tried to pour from an empty cup? Oh my God, <laughs> it ain't good. Your kids start vibrating at that level. Their behavior goes off. You start feeling resentful. You push away your kids, your, 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 your partner. How do you then pour into your projects and creative ideas and mission like you know so for me I value it I value spirituality I value investing in myself and learning new things and growth and evolution but not everybody does like there's a lot that I don't value that other people would value is it right or wrong no it just is and so it's not about them getting on board and singing me praises because yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just like recognizing that we're going to be in a situation. For me, I get to walk away with where am I doing that in life? Where am I judging others or being, you know, potentially jealous of others or seeing them as being wrong or expecting them to sacrifice their well-being, what's true for them, for myself. Because, and here's the thing, what really helps in that is recognizing it's not personal. Like I was just like, I could see it for what it is. And it's sometimes really hard as someone who loves to help people is often the people who have the biggest issue with you is the one who actually could benefit the most. (laughs) And so it's just like, oh, I can see, you know, the survival state and the struggle at play. And it can be really overwhelming to hear that and can be confronting for people. I remember the first time that I ever invested $3,500 in myself. It was uh, for a weekend, uh, four day um, uh, event. And I felt so nauseated, sick in the tummy. I was like a trembling mess. And I was like, it took me ages to make the decision. And when I did, I doubted myself. So I completely get takes a little bit 
And if you don't value it, you'll never understand that people would actually invest 12K into themselves. But for me, I value it because I know that's the biggest thing that brings a return on investment for me and for my family. And so obviously expecting that this is going to happen is going to support you. It will fuel you. It helped me. It is tricky when it's people you love. When your family or your partner or friends just be like, I can't handle you. Who are you? Like when you've gone from being disempowered, saying yes, tolerating everybody else's stuff, taking on board their stuff, carrying them along with you. And then you, you know, like I see this in my clients that come into my world and they step into this beautiful empowered place where it's like, I know who I am. I know what I need. I know how to give myself what it is that I need. And when you do that, then things you hold better different standards and so relationships have to change and how you you know your self-worth how you ask for things receive money and you know it changes because you've changed in here and so there is sometimes a need like for me to help support and guide women in that process of of like when others can't handle it we have a choice. Do we then pull back and self-sacrifice and, you know, people please and give away our, our peace, our joy, our abundance to others? Or do we hold firm, understand this is the process, it's going to happen, it happens. And in some circumstances, just leaning in and leading yourself and being brave and holding space and like this is mindset, heart set, soul set work. This is the burnout to bliss process, which is what I teach in Expanding Bliss. It's so critical because often we're just like reactive and like, oh, my God, and we can't handle feeling guilty and disappointing others. Oh, my God, we take it personally. And if someone has a different opinion, like your partner says, no, that's not right or I don't want to parent the kids this way or this is what has to happen, we make ourselves wrong right? Women, our tendency is proven in science that if things, if other people don't agree with us or things don't go according to plan, we blame ourselves. Men don't. Men often look outside of themselves for the fault, which can be very, very supportive of growth and <laughs> and change. But for us, it's like, oh my gosh. And so we, we kind of give up or we implode or we kind of give our power. We give our power to other people, including our partners. And so you might hear this and be like scared, like, oh, well, then if I change, I'm going to lose my partner. I'm going to lose my job. And and in some circumstances that ha- happens, it, we got to clear out relationships to create space for new nurturing and nourishing relationships. Like if you're saying to the universe, I want deep love and intimacy to feel safe and held and I, I want new levels of abundance and this person isn't the right match for that experience or reality, are you going to sacrifice your happiness, health and success for this one person? It's a choice. It's not right or wrong. It's a choice. But often when we can hold ourselves, hold space for ourselves, lead ourselves through the oh, the ick of it, the discomfort, the trigger, the activation of it, and hold space for the relationship or the other person or the situation to, to shift and grow and catch up in a way, you'll find that people often, I see it, people often like, oh my gosh, just after a moment, you, the partner's just reacted and all of a sudden they come back and they're like, oh, I get it. And it's like, oh, my gosh, Dr. Fee, it works. It works as I transform in here. I transform my relationship as I shifted in here. Oh, my goodness, holding new standards. It's created space for my partner to step up and step forward. Oh, my gosh, this works. So step number one is really just expecting it. It's not like creating it, but just being accepting when it does happen. It's not wrong. It's normal and natural. When we want, when we're ready to blaze brightly, there's going to be some heat at different stages. And it gets to be then we get to align our focus and energy on what needs to happen for me to stay true to my heart. And that is much better than resisting at all, feeling triggered and reactive. And so What I then noticed is this sense of like, fee, this is the green light. Let this be the green light. So it's like recognizing anytime we experience the contrast and duality, and I talk about the flip side a lot because it's so important to following your bliss, 
is that, you know, this situation where it's like, oh, especially being called unethical, oh, you know, like I've, I've been a doctor and a duty of care. And it's like, wait, um, that doesn't feel right. And recognizing that ick, that discomfort, it's in my control and there's a gift in it. And often we want to pull out and not tune in to the discomfort, the heartache, the pain. And we want to be like reactive and, you know, tell them what we think and like react and battle and fight it. But actually it's got nothing to do with it. Don't stop trying to change out there. Instead, see this as this opportunity shift in here. Oh my gosh. And so for me, it just like, rather than responding straight away, I was just like, oh, okay. This class has already started. Hello, people-pleasing tendencies. I'm in the classroom. <laughs> Universal love. I see you. And, you know, bringing some humor to it always helps. And it's just like feeling and utilizing my tools and embodying my training. And, you know, we have a bliss toolbox, which is what we teach in Burnout to Bliss. So my blissful life is our mindset component. At the end of that, you have mindset tools. At the end of Heart of Bliss is the heart set tools, which is like deeper, more profound, more transformative. And then we have the spiritual tools from my um, from my blissful self. And this is etheric hygiene and a good vibes toolbox and all these different things. And so I get to discern in that moment, what do I need? And that's the joy about having a bliss toolbox is that life is going to happen and there's going to be icky moments and there's going to be moments of immense pain. Okay. Having someone cut you off or not get you or project and judge and criticize you and try and cut your head off, right? <laughs> Lop your head off, tall poppy syndrome. You know, it can really feel uncomfortable. And so really what is wonderful is that we, within our own control, we, I have tools that I can use to support myself, to breathe, to regulate, to release, to liberate and reclaim my power from it. And so I then had the opportunity to just see this as a green light. I know when I work through the discomfort on the other side, is exactly what I want. So if we want to be authentically aligned and we want to blaze brightly, so that is a sense of confidence and strength and like conviction as to what we stand for and like speaking up for ourselves and like sticking up for ourselves too, but like really holding a sense of strength around what we believe in. And then something like this happens and we feel doubt and we feel fear and anxiety and we feel, oh my God, what? Oh, maybe I've said something wrong. Maybe that is wrong. That duality, it's like the pendulum. The pendulum can only swing if you allow it to go both ends. If you're like, I allow myself to feel strong and brave, but I'm not willing to feel the, feel the fear and doubt, embrace the fear and doubt. Can a pendulum swing? Hell no. You end up getting limited and limited and limited. So really embracing, seeing this as the green light, like this is what I get to embrace. This is actually everything that is required right now for me to, to blaze brightly. This, this classroom, this, oh my gosh, I get to embrace the energy that is underlying my people pleasing and in turn feel more strong, connected, confident, full of conviction. And just like, this is, this is me and it's okay. And so with that compassion, I was able to just reply, like, I get that. Like I truly love and adore these women and they it took great courage for them to stand up and say something and share their opinion i do feel like it could be done in a way where we recognize that as women we don't have to shoot each other down we get to rise together and we get to have different opinions and how we deliver it can be a little bit more skillful but i want all women to feel safe and and the truth is not a lot of women left because they didn't feel safe. And so what we, for me, it's just recognizing this is a, this is a gift of deeper compassion. And when we then come to conflict with a compassionate heart, like we can see people for their perspective, it is actually what will resolve the conflict faster. And I really am celebrating that. And I feel like for me, it's just supported my own growth. And just like, I was like, oh my gosh, now I get to show up and deliver this class. And Radiant Self is such a gift to all the people who are able to experience it. And then I heard myself say, Fee, what's the gift in it? 
And so this is step number three. This is how you can really support yourself to stay true to your heart is recognizing that everything in your life is there for your transformation. Use it. I often quote Ram Dass because honestly, this is going to fuel you, fuel your dreams. And like this classroom, immediately I was just like, what's the gift in this? Oh my gosh, how is this going to support me? And for for a long time, and I even this year, earlier this year, I had this thought of like, I really want to do a money mindset month and bring to the world wealth wisdom and share what I've learned around money being spiritual and like, oh my gosh, bring a whole new level and depth of conversation to the money conversation. And I started to wig out on it. There was a part of me was just like, oh, I'm not sure. Like just before I launched Radiant Cell, I was like, I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't know if I really need to have the, you know, it's expected there'll be some flack. Some people won't get it. And (laughs) I don't know if I need that. You know, the ego is so like, oh, it's slippery. And it's like, yeah, I don't really need that in my life right now. It's good. I don't need to grow and learn. I'm happy with my little comfort zone. (laughs) And yet, when I was in this and it's all about money, it fueled me. And I was like, enough. Like we got to normalize and celebrate, actually not even normalize, we get it to celebrate big money in the hearts of, in the hands and the hearts of big hearted women. Like celebrate it. For me, I love the people I know, women I know. I love seeing them thrive and cultivating wealth because I know that the way they go about it is that they have provided a ton of value and impact in the world and that they are amazing guardians of money and through them they get to be the vessel of such great goodness in the world and sponsoring you know new projects new ideas getting new amazing change looking at having space and freedom to be there for their kids like oh my gosh living their best life but also sponsoring charities tithing you know, giving unconditionally. And it's something I'm so passionate about. And this like classroom and the clench and the whole like, okay, just helped me. The gift was, is like, this has to, this conversation has to be said. This is time. This is time for me to step out. And so, you know, I want to share this with you because it's inevitable. It is the green light for you to keep going, sweetheart, blaze brightly, stay true to your heart. And there will always be a gift in whatever classroom you're in, whatever challenge you're facing. And I really invite you to find the gold, alchemize every circumstance and challenge to gold. And if you need support in doing that, it's what I do really well. (laughs) And supporting and guiding other women to really discern what is real and true to them, follow their bliss and lead themselves. Like it is the following your bliss isn't woo and whimsical and like, you know, rainbows and sunshines. It is like living brave. It's showing up with courage. It is like, oh my gosh, stepping out with confidence and like following what, you know, intuition and guidance and really loving your human, like that human part of you, your mind, Oh, your heart and learning to embrace and love the lo- lovable bits within you. It's this beautiful, magical process of evolution. And the burnout to bliss process, which is where we look at mindset and heart set and soul set work to really liberate you, support you, give you exactly what it is that you need, require, desire to help you to follow your bliss. And there's, like I said, there's inevitable, inevitable challenges waiting for you, but to lead yourself through that with confidence. That is what we're about. That's our gig. And I really invite you, if you resonate with that conversation and you're really looking for a framework and a process and community and accountability and one-on-one work, well, I've got some spaces available where we can, you know, I invite you to apply and we'll have a conversation, make sure that it's a really good fit for for us and that we're going to be able to, that I'm going to be able to support you to get unimaginable results and success and I can't wait to connect with you too so it's been such a joy showing up today sharing my heart (laughs) and I trust that it supports you and sending you a lot of love bye-bye 
It has been so beautiful spending this time with you. If you found today's episode inspiring or helpful, please subscribe, give us a good review and share the love. I invite you to be a part of the Bliss Movement. Join our Bliss Sisterhood or apply to join my Expanding Bliss program. The links are in my bio and I cannot wait to be doing life with you soon. Stay tuned for the next episode where I'll be sharing more training, stories, strategies and solutions to guide you towards your bliss.